Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of session three of module four, specification based or black box techniques. In part two of specification based or black box test design techniques, we will learn about decision table testing. So let's understand what is decision table testing. So before going into details of decision table testing, let's understand what decision table is. So a decision table shows different combination of inputs with their associated output. This is also known as cause effect table. So in decision table, you have different combinations of inputs. So you have, suppose you have condition one, condition two, and based on the changes in those conditions, your outcome is um, defined, your outcome changes. So in decision table, you have different combinations and your output is dependent on the conditions, on the outcome of those conditions. So that's why it is also known as cause effect table. Um, and decision table is made up of conditions, which are kind of inputs and the actions or outcomes of those um, input conditions. Then this decision table testing is used if different combinations of inputs results in different actions. So if different combinations of inputs result in different actions, then you use decision table testing in such kind of situations. So for example, um, your you, you are you are um, having uh, say a mortgage gauge calculator uh, in which you, you enter the amount you enter uh, your tenure and you enter your um, rate of interest so based on the changes in these conditions in these three conditions your output your processed EMI is affected all right your equated monthly installments is calculated based on these three input conditions and so in this kind of um, scenarios you need to use decision table testing we will take this um, example in much detail in later slides so decision table is more efficient in testing business rules so whenever you are testing some business rules which are uh, dependent on different conditions you need to use decision table testing the decision table provides a systematic way of stating complex business rule which makes it very helpful so whenever you have you know like complex business rules um, you can have it in the form of different conditions and based on that conditions you can identify what will be the outcome of that business rule and because of that it becomes very easy when you are using decision table to identify those business uh, complex business rules and decision table aids in systematic selection of effective test cases and helps in finding any ambiguities in specification and if you are doing um, if you have some modules in your software which are dependent on different um, combinations of inputs which for which the outcome is dependent on some combination of inputs then in that kind of scenarios you can have a decision table and list all those conditions or inputs and list the outcome of those conditions and that way you can figure out if all the combinations or all the conditions or inputs are being captured and the relevant outcome for those conditions has been captured in the table if there is something missing in the table that means there are ambiguities in the requirement which you can clarify so let's see what uh, decision table looks like so here is the decision table when you have you know conditions um, condition one condition two and based on the input for the condition uh, conditions you have the outcome so outcome one outcome two uh, or the actions are uh, dependent on the inputs for the condition so each condition is set to show the input condition 
and are usually set to true or false so each condition can be either true or false and then each for each condition the output is determined so based on different um, input for the conditions the outcome is determined or action is determined so each column in decision table represents a unique business rule and so it is a test case so if you see here there are two conditions and based on two conditions there will be you know four um, different combinations of those two conditions so there are four test cases possible for this um, uh, this these two conditions and so each column test case one test case two test case three and test case four is a test case for your testing so using decision table for test design uh, the first task to design um, decision table is to identify the component or system which reacts according to the combination of inputs so the very first thing in decision table testing is to identify the component in the system in the software which reacts based on different combination of inputs all right so if there is any component which has certain conditions and based on the inputs on uh, different conditions if the outcome is uh, varied then that's the module which you need to test using decision table testing for example the mortgage calculator you enter the the loan amount you enter the loan um, uh, the, the rate of interest you enter the tenure and based on the different uh, conditions of these three values uh, the outcome that is the processed equated monthly installment is very uh, varies so you need to test uh, decision you need to use decision table testing in such kind of modules wherever you find find such kind of modules which are affected by different uh, inputs uh, which are affected by inputs of different uh, conditions so do not deal with large number of conditions all at once divide them into smaller subsets and test one subset at a time so if there are many many conditions um, so do not try to form a decision table with 10 different conditions you need to divide it into smaller um, two to three conditions at a time in a module and then uh, test the subset one subset at a time and not all included in one otherwise you will end up in you know like hundreds of different um, test cases with with different conditions so that's that's not feasible so you need to divide it into a smaller subset and test one subset at a time and once the conditions for component are identified then they are put in a table listing true and false for each aspect so once you get the conditions then you put it in the table and you identify uh, the input either is true or false and then test the output or outcome accordingly based on the input conditions so <clears throat> let's take an example to understand it so let's take an example of loan EMI calculator to understand decision table testing um, the test condition for loan EMI calculator can be loan amount or repayment term so repayment term can be 20 years 25 years and the loan amount so these are the two very simple things that we considered in loan EMI calculator so the empty decision table for this example will look something like this so you have two conditions here repayment amount entered and repayment term entered so um, if repayment amount entered yes repayment term entered yes so you'll be having you know like four conditions um, four different combinations of these conditions so we have uh, four columns rule one or test case one rule two or test case two so let's see what will be the uh, input for the different test cases here so if you see here um, so in loan EMI uh, calculator if the re uh, has the repayment amount entered if it is true or repayment term entered true then process loan EMI then it will because 
in loan EMI calculator both the both the quantities are required or necessary if any one of them is missing then it might um, might fail to process so in the first case here amount entered true term entered process loan EMI yes in the second case amount entered repayment term entered false so we are not sure what what the outcome should be similarly amount not entered false amount entered false or a term entered true we are not sure here or if both the fields are false what will happen all right so in the above table we are not clear about the outcome for rule two three and four so we are not sure what the outcome should be in the um, in these three different uh, rules so if you are not clear that's where ambiguities can be resolved so you can ask from the business stakeholder or business analysts what will be the outcome or action when we don't enter the repayment amount we enter the repayment amount but not the term we enter the term but not the repayment amount or we and we do not enter both so what what will be the outcome in that case and then you can remove those uh, resolve those ambiguities so we can for now we can assume that both conditions are mandatory for processing the loan so the modified decision table will look like something like this so if the, if both of them are mandatory then definitely if any one of them is, is missing then there should be proper error message being displayed that uh, you need to enter both both the conditions in order to get your loan EMI processed so the modified decision table will look like if both of them are true then process loan EMI if any of them is missing then proper error message should be displayed so here both of them are missing then error message is displayed yes um, if amount is missing and term is entered then error message is being displayed should get displayed and if amount is entered but term is missing then error message should get displayed so that's how you remove the ambiguities as well um, if you're not sure you can ask business analyst or other stakeholders what will be the condition in case some of the rule or some of the conditions um, are changed or what will be the outcome for different combinations of conditions now uh, let's take another example the live example so mortgage calculator example um, so here here are the test cases and so you need to go to this URL yourmortgage.com.au slash calculators and so here if you see so here is the loan amount if you enter the loan amount and the interest rate and the loan period and then calculate so it gives you um, your you know like monthly repayments um, your weekly repayments and everything right but if you go back and you do not enter this should say the missing field interest rate if you remove years should give you error that loan pay, missing field interest rate missing field loan period so these are the um, the outcome this is your outcome this is the outcome and these are the input conditions so how many conditions are here loan amount is the first condition interest rate is the second condition and loan period is the third condition so if first condition is true and second and third are false then you get an output then you get an error if all of them are true then it gets processed successfully then you get um, loan amount your equated monthly installment process successfully but if any of them is missing then it should give you proper error message so let's go ahead and see the table what 
test cases can uh, can be possible in this case so if all of them were um, were present then the result was success emi will be calculated successfully but if loan period is missing there will be error message and what error message loan period missing in case interest rate is missing then there will be error message and what error message enter interest rate if both uh, interest rate and loan period is missing then there will be error it should not process it should not go ahead and error enter rate and period then if loan amount is missing but interest rate and loan period are present then it should give error uh, what error enter loan amount so similarly for um, missing loan amount missing loan period should give you error enter loan amount and loan period and if everything is missing and it should again give an error so here you see there are there are three conditions and based on three conditions there will be eight test cases and you need to test all these eight test cases and you should you need to verify that for every missing condition for all the conditions all the different conditions you get proper either success message with equated monthly installments or an error message with proper um, error displayed uh, for whichever conditions um, are missing so if interest rate and loan period is missing then it should give you a proper error message stating that interest rate and loan period is missing so you can just go to this url and use this decision table to test um, to to test these different test cases so in this kind of modules that that we have seen in modigase calculator because you have different conditions and based on the conditions you were getting different outcomes so in such such kind of conditions such kind of modules decision table testing is very handy and you should always use decision table testing so to conclude um, in this session we learn about decision table testing and we saw live example um, using modigase calculator and how you can use decision table effectively to test modules um, which which vary based on different condition for the output of those modules which vary based on different conditions so you can go ahead to the mortgage calculator url that is shown that we have discussed in previous um, slide and practice decision table testing thank you